Well, folks, as you can see, I have Roger Harkness with me, and he's the peaceful poet, I think is what you go by. Yes. Uh, and today we're going to talk about Hopi End Time Prophecy. And I actually have the blurb written from what he sent me, but I'm not going to read that. I'll let him read it if he wants, because he's the one that sent it to me. Uh, so, Roger, go ahead. And uh, why did the Hopi uh, prophecy, what does it mean to you? Well, it resonates with me, and I'm not quite sure why. It just really, it just seems really special to me. Uh, I have an, an opinion about it, but I'm probably... Probably, I, I don't, I may not have it right. Uh, I did uh, uh, ask other people for their opinion, but I haven't got a reply back from them yet. So I guess we'll just have to wing it. And what it means, ever, whatever it means to you, great, great. But yeah, I just read a part of it here. You'll read the rest well, of I, it. I, you know, I have the whole thing in that you sent me in the blurb. Yeah, so okay. You, you can go ahead and, and read that if you, if you want to. Okay, all right. Um, this is uh, it's titled "A uh, Hopi Elder Speaks," and I'm not exactly sure where this came from. But if you uh, uh, if you go to Google and you Google "River the Hopi River Prophecy," uh, you'll find it, and it's it's everywhere. It's pretty popular. But um, uh, it starts out: uh, You've been telling the people that this is the eleventh hour. Now you must go back and tell the people that this is the hour, and there are things uh, to be considered. Where are you living? Uh, what are you doing? What are your relationships? Are you in the right relation? Uh, where is your water? Uh, know your garden. It is time to speak your truth. Create your community. Be good to each other. And do not, out, uh, do not look outside yourself for the leader, which is really important. Uh, a lot of us make that mistake. Uh, then he clasped his hands together, smiled, and said, this could be a good time. Uh, there is a river flowing now very fast. It is so great and swift that there are those who will be afraid. Uh, they will try to hold on to the shore. They will feel they are torn apart and will suffer greatly. No, the river has its destination. The elders say we must let go of the shore, push off into the middle of the river, keep our eyes open and our heads above water. And I say, See who is in there with you and celebrate. At this time in history, we are to take nothing personally, least of all ourselves. For the moment that we do, our spiritual growth and journey comes to a halt. The time for the lone wolf is over. Gather yourselves, banish the word struggle from your attitude and your vocabulary. All that we do now must be done in a sacred manner and in celebration. We are the ones we've been waiting for. And that's just real special. <laughs> yeah, we are the ones we've been waiting for, of course, is uh, something that a lot of people have been saying for uh, at least a couple of decades now, <laughs> if not longer. Yeah. Yeah, I, the, the Hopi, when I um, studied all the religions back in 1988, uh, 1989, somewhere around there, the Hopi Indians was one of the religions I studied, and I had a book, and I can't even remember the name of it, and I looked for it, and I can't find it, but uh, someone had uh, written down all their oral traditions that they passed on from generation to generation, and the unique thing about the Hopi Indians is they go all the way back to the Great Flood, and you'll find this, you'll find this Great Flood in a lot of religions. Absolutely. And the Hopi Indian is one of them. And, uh, and their tradition, according to their tradition, is uh, the ant people came and visited them. And it's kind of curious what these ant people are. But the ant people came and visited them and built a log and put them in the log and sealed them up. And then the great flood came. And then when the flood was over, the ant people let them out. And then... Uh, led them to their promised land, because it seems that a lot of these religions have promised lands. And, um, and uh, when the time comes, the uh, ant people will come and return. And that's, that will be, I guess, the end times when the ant people come and return. Yeah, I don't know that I'm very familiar with the idea of ant people. 
although many, many traditions teach very similar things, and over many millennia, uh, uh -huh. the Christian story is not an original story by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -mm. No, it comes from uh, Egypt, I believe, is where it started. I'm not sure. Wait, wait, but oh. I think it came from Egypt. Well, I think probably even pre-Egypt, <laughs> but... Uh, you know, there, the, you know, how many civilizations have there been on Earth? That were, we're supposedly in the fifth world now. So uh, mm -hmm. it's been destroyed, some say four times, and there seem to be geological evidence of that. Yeah, in the Sumerian text, uh, there's a, it talks about what sounds like an atomic, weapons were, were, were uh, let loose, I think, by accident. And they sound just like atomic weapons, and it sounds just like an atomic destruction. And it just, it just was, it was pretty bad. Pretty much destroyed the whole world. And it talks about that in Sumerian text. So yeah, we've been here, and we've been kind of destroyed, and we come back. We've been kind of destroyed, and we come back and, uh, several times. And I don't think anybody really uh, knows. It the, makes me scratch my head, and I'm sure <laughs> I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But. Uh, yeah, everybody has somebody that's going to return, and I don't think all the ant people are going to return. I think there was like three of them that led them to the promised land. Uh, and I wish I had the book, I'd go back and refresh my memory on that, but I think there were three of them that led them to, which is an odd thing, again, three. You know, three is, seems to be a real important number in a lot of religions as well. Like the Trinity? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, but, the Christian religion leaves out the feminine. I mean, they, they the uh -huh. Holy Ghost is the divine feminine, but uh -huh. uh, that's not the way it's presented in most Christian churches. At least right. it's not a, something that, the concept that I had growing up in the church. Yeah, the Mother Mary has kind of taken that over. It's not officially written down anywhere, but there, certain sects have kind of taken yes, it. Yes, you're yeah. right, including Catholicism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know if, it may not be completely accurate, but you know, there's religion doesn't really have accuracy. It doesn't have history. It doesn't have science. It's mostly imagination and spirit. The two connect, and you come up with different things. And it doesn't have to be accurate. It well, just has to be, I think if anything, to you. Uh, a lot of the script, what we call scriptures, shows the evolution of the God. Mm -hmm. God is evolving with creation, or but of course it's man at various stages of man's evolution that are describing what they consider to be the divine. Mm -hmm. And so there probably is not actually an evol evolution of the Godhead or the creator. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an evolution of our perceptions of a creation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah that's probably, yeah, because I mean, we have evolved, I mean, as bad as, as it is now, you know, all these terrible things that happen and stuff. If you go back in history, things were much worse. I mean, they were really bad back then. Uh, I remember I was a truck driver. Uh, I, you know, for some reason I'm, I was thinking, oh, it would be, it'd be so nice if we could go back to the way it was, you know. And that's what I was thinking before I went to sleep. And then that night I dreamt about being back in the... Um, uh, Western, no Western times, and it was pretty bad back then. You did not want to live back then. If you survived, you were lucky. I mean, people were hung up for anything. If, you know, if, if you did anything wrong, they would hang you. And you just didn't. yeah, you didn't even have to do anything wrong. You just uh, maybe had to express uh, an idea that was contrary to the accepted viewpoint of the time. Yeah, the culture. <laughs> yeah, you get hung or burnt or burnt to the stake or. Yeah, times were bad back then. So we ha you, you have to, when you look at it, you have to realize that we have evolved. Even though as bad as it might seem to be, there is some evolution. Uh, uh, apparently, although there's evidence that we might have been more advanced at, at some point in the mo far more distant past. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, you, you look at uh, some of the things that they've unearthed, uh, and it, it certainly creates an enigma for people's yeah. understanding, something to wonder about and scratch our heads over. 
yeah, back when they uh, created the, uh, I can't think of what they're called now, the, the, the huge uh, things in Egypt, you know? The pyramids? Pyramids, yeah, back when they created the pyramids, that's when we were probably at our height at that time. And those pyramids are a lot older than the than is commonly believed because the Sphinx they've discovered is quite a bit older. So they, they well, and there's pyramids in more than just Egypt too. There's mm -hmm. you know pyramidal structures that have even been found in the Americas. Yep, and and there were like these huge like sink bathtub kind of things made out of crystals, and they're like. They, first, you know, it was believed that they were just ornamental ornaments, you know, but they've discovered as they've researched a little bit more that this is what they actually used to heal people. It was these crystal tubs and they would fill them with water and they'd use vibration and they would heal people with vibrations. And now we're learning that, oh yeah, you can do that now. We're learning that now. And how they already knew it back then, you know. Yeah, but that's not considered uh, in line with modern medical science and so people that teach that thing are are considered to be fringe yeah quacks, yeah. Uh, but i think the medical part is the fringe <laughs> yeah and see now that gets back to the hopi their prophecy about the river now those who are afraid to uh, say that the government was in actually did 9-11 or afraid to say that CNN is false news, uh, that kind of thing. They're the ones who are holding on to the edge. And this river of information is just flowing faster and faster. And these people are holding on. They don't want to, they don't want to believe it. They don't want to accept it. They just want to pretend that it's not true. So they're holding on real tight, but while the rest of us are joining in and having this conversation with each other. And so I think that's what the river is. That's my interpretation of it. I, I was hoping to get ideas from other people, but I didn't get a chance to do that. But that's that's my interpretation of it, and I think that's what we're, where we're at right now. Well, there's definitely a flow of energy that uh, has the potential of making significant changes in the reality of human culture. Uh, and hopefully those things will accelerate and... Uh, old control grids will be uh, swept asunder somehow and drowned, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, or burned up or whatever, but destroyed because we don't, we don't need the competition that has been the focal point and earmark of, of human civilization for far too long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, There's, there's like a collection of gold. Gold seems to be so very important. It seems to be, you know, they're trying to collect it all, and then it just sort of disappears. And supposedly we were created to mine gold. That was what we were originally created. I'm sure you've heard of this before. And the United States has, has collected all this gold from other countries. I remember this as a kid. I remember seeing seeing it on the news when I was a kid, you know, all the other countries were concerned about what we were going to do with all this gold. And America supposedly collected all this gold. It's in Fort Knox, it. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> if we ever break in there, we'll find it's a big old empty room, probably filled with lead or something. Who knows? Like gold colored lead. But it's like, it's like disappeared. And I don't know. Uh, supposedly the Anunnaki, they're not around anymore. Uh, Jupiter, it, I've been told that Jupiter is planet X, that there was an accident and uh, planet X and, and Jupiter come together and that's why, you know, and, and apparently Saturn was involved in it and that's why they get the big rings and stuff and that's where our moon come from. I've heard this theory and that's possible. So if all that's true and the Anunnaki don't exist anymore, then why are we collecting all this gold and where is it going? And it, that's kind of interesting. That's an interesting subject. And there's probably things we don't know about, we can only guess about. But, but yeah, there are powers in, in place, and they have a specific purpose that they're not telling us, and we're just guessing. Well, there are a lot of Native Americans that we falsely call Indians, 
uh, uh -huh. there's a lot of uh, things in their culture that in some ways they were more advanced than European culture. Uh -huh. uh, so, I mean, I don't know that as, as I've said, we scratch our heads and we wonder uh -huh. what is truth to me. It it's always boils down to remembering that there's an interconnectedness with all of life. Uh -huh. and, and there's, it's ridiculous to keep fighting over who's right. Love yeah. is right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's just, because it's impossible for us to even come close to imagine what is the truth because uh, the way I like to explain it or, or, or visualize it is the truth is like a sandy beach and we're only able to pick up just a few grains of the sand and but you got a whole beach full and there's a lot there but so and and each person picks up a different part of it and and we all share it with each other and so you're right the fight is just ignorant it's just ignorance that's our ego yeah well it's it's ego and yet personal identity is not a bad thing mm -hmm. if we if we would balance it with the with the whole with the bigger picture instead mm -hmm. of trying to separate it and compete mm -hmm. yeah yeah Co competition i mean that's the first thing we learn as a child is how to compete that's what they teach us in school you know everybody competes to get the best grade get the highest grade and, who can run the fastest? Uh, who can run the fastest? Yeah, everything's. You about get older. Who gets the prettiest girl? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who gets the nicest car? Who has the nicest house? You know, the neighbors has it, so we got to get it. That kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the human society is a comedy of errors, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we obviously still don't have it together yet. Uh, because just look at the world. Although things do seem, as the end time prophecy, things do seem to be accelerating and moving toward some kind of an event that will hopefully bring positive, not necessarily destructive change. Yeah, yeah. Um, getting back to the uh, ant people. Now, it's, it's my opinion that the ant people were aliens from who knows where. And uh, supposedly there's three races of aliens, there's some prairies, whatever, but um, they're aliens who are supposed to return. And uh, I have a, a, a good friend, uh, she calls herself, um, uh, shoot, I can't remember, what the hell? A sparkle, a sparkle light, that's what she calls herself, a sparkle light. And she uh, she's, claims that she's a, a light person. Is that what they call themselves? Uh, you know, the light being? Yeah, light being, I suppose, yeah. But she's really smart, and she I guess she's into engineering and math. She's really good at math and stuff like that. But uh, she does have a, um, a chip in the back of her neck, and she, she showed it online once, but supposedly she has been uh, abducted several times. And uh, so she's... Wow. And, and here's here's the thing where again she's there are things that she's not allowed to tell anybody she knows that she's not allowed to tell anybody but anyways one night I had a dream I dreamt that all these spaceships came down and to pick us up to take us off the earth because you know something bad was going to happen and I told her about it and she says no no she says they changed their mind they were going to do that but they changed their mind. <laughs> So we'll just have to survive. A few of us will survive. We won't all survive, but we'll just have to survive. But yeah, something is coming. That's, I mean, it's, it's a given. I mean, and for anybody that think that it, it isn't coming is just being naive because it's impossible for us to continue on the path that we're going without it all coming to an end because the earth is going to run out of resources. We keep taking from the earth and keep taking from the earth. Eventually it's going to end and the earth won't have nothing left to give. And we will, we will start dwindling. It may not happen right away, but it'll happen slowly, but we'll start dwindling away. And maybe we already are. So one way or another, 
an end time is coming, whether it's a slow process that we create ourselves if we continue in the direction we're going, or something cataclysmic is going to happen. And, um, and there again, for those who don't believe in God, uh, you have to think there are so many things, like for instance, uh, um, Yellowstone Park, uh, it's overdue. Uh, or another caldera. <laughs> yeah. And then there's other volcanoes in the world that are overdue. And supposedly, if you follow all the math about the CO2, that should have happened a long time ago as well. I mean, there's so many things that should have already happened or should be already happening. And we should be like, it should be over with for us. But yet we just, things get delayed and we just keep on going. It's like somebody, or something is preventing this great cataclysm from happening right away, like, as it is often predicted. So, it's the end. Yeah, lots of us have to wonder what the truth is. I mean, as I've said in many videos, I used to think I had it figured out. Uh -huh. <laughs> as, I've got, as I've gotten older, there's more questions, not more answers. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I, same here. Like I, I talked to you about the the magnetic waves, right? How they're collapsing, and the, the, the north and south pole is moving. The magnetic north and south pole is moving. Well, a new twist to that now. Apparently, they stopped moving. They're sort of dancing around where they're at, but they're not moving anymore. It's like okay, so what's going on really? Uh, and the. Uh, uh, and the same thing with the uh, sun and it's uh, uh, going silent. Well, it's starting to act up again. So, you know, every time when we think we know what the heck is going on, like you said, something happens, something changes. So, yeah, well, change is permanent. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that may be the only thing that is permanent. Is that, and that's evolution, uh, mm -hmm. that's creation. The creation hasn't ended. It was not a one-time event. It's a perpetual event that keeps evolving. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Everything has to die to be born, and then everything lives. Um, I like the way the Gnostic scriptures explained it. Uh, when the Old Testament in the Bible talks about how God repented because he created man. And... Well, the Gnostic scriptures sort of delve into that and explain it further. And, and here you get the female part of God comes in as the spirit and talks to the father and explains to the father what is actually supposed to happen. Um, we are, you know, evil and stuff like, you know, he says and he repented that he created us. But because of our mistakes and because of our errors, we learn and we continue to learn and we continue to build knowledge. And we and uh, continue to, to become wise and stuff. And at the very end, that will be uh, harvested. At the very end, it'll be harvested. And so that's what all this is all about. So the great wisdom and knowledge will be harvested at the end. And when you, and when you read the, uh, the scriptures of Jesus and it talks about the harvest all the time, it makes you wonder. It's like, well, maybe, maybe they understood something. Maybe they had that figured out, maybe. That's an idea anyways. Yeah, there's, there's lots of ideas, and there always will be, I guess, as long as people have different points of view, which simply means you're in a different place where you're viewing things. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and things, if you're, if you're in the desert, it's not going to look the same as if you're on, a, on an island somewhere surrounded by water, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, you know, the perceptions are based on our location and our personal experience. Mm -hmm. And just because your experience is this doesn't mean that other person's experience is wrong. It mm -hmm. just means it's different. Yeah. Yeah, we, we definitely have to get away from this idea that, yeah, we got it figured out and everybody else is an idiot. <laughs> everybody else is not an idiot. Everybody has something to show us. And, and something to share. And, and if we would just learn to cooperate, uh, we could advance so much easier than mm -hmm. this constant butting heads with each other 
and uh, creating cat, uh, cataclysm after cataclysm. Uh, do we need that to grow? I, I would think not. I hope not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, now I'm sort of like, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we're at the end of the video then. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I thank you for taking time to share again. We're, it's a little bit shorter than the half an hour that I usually do with the conversations, but that's good because a lot of them go over. <laughs> so Roger, thank you very much. And uh, any closing words? Um, yeah, I, I think everything, uh, I can't really think of anything, uh, but uh, we discussed, you know, we all need to, uh, uh, to join, to come together into that river and just let it take us. Dive in, in other words. Dive in, yeah. Dive in and go with the flow. Yeah, don't be afraid. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And... Namaste. Namaste.